Hey, it's Amelia here. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. We're gonna be delving a little bit more into the whole CrowdStrike debacle, the thing that took down the entire world. I'll give you my thoughts. I'll give you my thoughts on whether you should be looking to use something different instead of CrowdStrike. Maybe you should stay with CrowdStrike. Time will tell, but we're gonna talk about that and a few other things. As I said, my name is Emilio. I love technology, and if you do as well, I would love it if you click on that subscription button, click on the bell so you don't miss out on any of our video releases. Also, if you're a techie like I am and you wanna know more about tech, why don't you go check out some of my training courses down below of this video description. I've got links to a number of training courses on all things tech, on cybersecurity, on Windows Server, Active Directory, on the Mac, how to become a good IT manager, and a whole bunch more. So we're now a few days in, after the earth stood still, or it sort of felt like that. I've worked in tech for a long time, and if you've even worked in tech for even a few minutes, you know how bad things get when things go wrong. We are responsible for making sure that the lights stay on. For the most part, if you work in tech in a company, the people that you work with, not your IT fellow colleagues, but everybody else, all your staff, your customers, your clients, they shouldn't know what you're doing, really. Because a lot of the stuff that you do is the magic behind the scenes. It's all of the dark arts that happen without anybody really understanding or knowing. They just put their trust in IT and IT just sort of make it happen. They sort of fix it. But then, Unfortunately, when things go wrong, who do they call? Who do they blame? IT. That's when they remember us. That's when they remember us. Have you ever seen IT Crowd? There's this great scene in IT Crowd where uh, the IT team have just done this awesome project. The whole group is being congratulated by the CEO of the business. And these three people, I want to really thank them for all the effort that they have put in. And then he thanks the toilet cleaners and he forgets the IT team. It sort of feels like that a little bit, but they definitely remember us when things go wrong. And this was one of those examples where things went wrong, the IT team became the heroes. We went out, we conquered. Most people that I've been speaking to have resolved at least majority of it. However, there's still a little bit more work to do. And then of course there is the follow-up. There's all the repercussions of what's gonna happen. So as you know by now, CrowdStrike deployed an update to their Falcon software, their endpoint protection software that is running on PCs, Windows PC specifically, Windows servers across the world, bringing them down by a blue screen of death that was encountered by Windows. And you could have a little bit of a workaround CrowdStrike, Microsoft worked very, very hard to create some sort of a workaround, but a lot of these computers and servers had to be manually rolled back, manually fixed, manually patched by the fearless technology team. You know what's crazy is in the aftermath of this, the amount of web searches that were being done across the interwebs for Windows alternatives, for CrowdStrike alternatives was insane. The world was looking for something else that wasn't Windows. Here's the thing. Microsoft is the behemoth that is responsible for majority of computers around the world running its Windows operating system, right? They did a great job at deploying this awesome operating system for all you Mac folks. I'll get to you in a second. But here's the scary thing is the majority of the world is running a Microsoft based service, a Windows based operating system. So who's to say that this thing couldn't happen again? Not necessarily with CrowdStrike, but what if somebody at Microsoft, a one of your devs at Microsoft accidentally screw something up and then deploy it through a Windows update, right? It could happen, right? It could actually happen in that scale. And then we have a mass outage yet again. But we're hoping that this CrowdStrike issue, people have learned from that. And I think that's one of the most important things when it comes to people in technology like you and me. We're gonna screw up. We're gonna screw up. We're gonna do things that bring systems down. I mean, I remember early on in my career, I was responsible for patching of Windows computers uh, through a, a solution called WSUS, which is Microsoft's patching solution. And I was doing a good job. And then finally, I was doing that for enough time that they thought, we're gonna now make him do some servers. We're now gonna give him the responsibility to patch some servers. Now, I don't remember, I think it was Foglight or BMC, or there's one of these other technologies that we were using for deployment of patches against the servers. We weren't using WSUS, we we're using a more enterprise grade 
solution for our servers. And they gave me that responsibility. And you know what I did? I pushed the button against our domain controllers in the middle of the day instead of scheduling it. Uh, people couldn't log in. It was a bit of a kerfuffle. And yeah, I got slapped on the wrist. Don't do that again. But that was a learning opportunity where I never did, I never did that again. From then onwards, I almost then was like, I need to be very, very careful about what I'm doing. I need to be very careful about my decisions in future. So this is this whole discussion that is being had, right? Is should I use a different vendor other than CrowdStrike? Maybe, maybe not, maybe yes, right? I, I, I would say don't jump the gun too early and just be like, you know what? I'm ditching CrowdStrike and I'm gonna go and use one of the others that are out there. And there's a lot of others out there. All right, CrowdStrike is one of the big ones. It's one of the great ones. You know, if you look at the top 10 around endpoint protection solutions and tools that can detect security vulnerabilities and odd behavior on a network, on a computer, it's up there with one of the best. But there are others. So there are other alternatives. But here's the thing. Here's what I've always learned. Just because somebody made a mistake, and this is clearly a mistake, a big mistake. So there's gonna be questions asked, there's gonna be consequences as a result of this. And if you have a look at the stocks, the shares for CrowdStrike, they have been plummeting. And that's because people are losing trust, they're losing faith in CrowdStrike, which sometimes is a little bit unfortunate. You understand, right? It's a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction where something wrong happens, and you just ditch it. You go away, you go look for something else. Not always the best solution. I think it'll be very, very telling as the weeks and the months go on, how CrowdStrike responds to this. And then you make the decision on whether you should ditch CrowdStrike for something else. I think so far, uh, from what, at least from what I've seen, you know, having watched and read stuff by the CEO of CrowdStrike, having read other announcements that have been made, having read what Microsoft's response is working together with CrowdStrike to get our customers up and running, I feel it's been pretty good. They've been very, very transparent with what happened, admitting we made a mistake and working very, very hard to try to fix this whole problem. There's not many companies that can say that they brought down the whole world. So this is a significant learning opportunity for CrowdStrike. And almost it's one of those things, that typical slogan, get knocked down, but I get up again. And now they can put on their checklist of things that they've achieved is being able to recover, I think in for the most part, quite quickly, they were able to deploy a fix at least quite quickly to something that was a significant stuff up. So they now have that experience. While all of these other companies they don't have that experience. They can see from afar, they can learn how CrowdStrike responded and all of that sort of stuff, but they don't have the experience firsthand of bringing down the interwebs across the world. They don't have that, while CrowdStrike do. Look, for me, I would say, let's just be very, very cautious. Some companies, some big wigs, some talking heads, some significant business leaders across the world have already made the decision. There's a lot of chatter on the social medias saying this company has now ditched CrowdStrike, they're now gonna use something else, they're gonna use something else. Sometimes that may be a good idea to do that. Other times, let's just wait. Let's just wait, let's just see how the response is. Let's see what this thing looks like in a few weeks and then we make the decision. Now, I'm a bit of a Mac fanboy. I love me a bit of a Mac computer. Uh, and a lot of you who watch my channel are gonna go, how dare he mention the Mac as a potential good alternative? You can't use Macs in the enterprise world. I have, I've done it. I worked in lots of companies that use them and they use them quite well, as long as you got the right infrastructure in place. But is this now a, a, a thought to use a alternative to Windows even? Because Windows running the monopoly for everything, you've got alternatives around Mac OS, even Linux, the Linux servers are pretty amazing. They're gonna be significantly cheaper. Is that an alternative? You know, because those customers that were running Linux, that were running Mac OS, running CrowdStrike on those solutions didn't get affected as a result. That's not to say that they may not in future because they could, right? The same problem could be faced by them at some other point. But I think a lot of this just comes back to the whole problem that we've got in the first place is that we've got such a monopoly, right? We've just got so many big tech companies that run and rule majority of the world. And nowadays, I mean, I think we work, technology people work in the greatest industry. Tech is changing so quickly. 
And yes, there's a lot of companies that do tech and do tech solutions and software and things like that. But for the most part, the whole world runs on technology. I wanna hear from you around like, how could we have avoided this? I mean, you, you can point blame. You can point at the, the team of developers who uh, unfortunately push something out without adequate testing. And that's very true. It's very true. Like how did this piece of code get pushed out without adequate testing across the whole world? I don't know. Don't know, we've got to figure that out. But why don't you let me know? I mean, how could we have avoided this? And how could we avoid something like this again in future? Because what's to say that this can't happen again? Think about the backend infrastructure. You've got people running Cisco devices. You've got Fortinet devices, all of your firewalls. What if that a patch goes wrong against a Cisco core switch? and it brings down all the switches. What if there's like a major bug that gets deployed by AWS against some of the core stuff in there and brings down a whole bunch of AWS systems? Because ultimately, there's multiple levels of redundancy. And this is something that you always hear about when you're seeing outages that occur or a cyber breach or something like this. I always ask myself, how could this have happened understanding the way that the big tech companies should be managing redundancy failover. They should have multiple points of failure where if this one goes down, these ones are not affected. How can this still happen? And this is the thing that always scares me and perplexes me. And this is the thing that always keeps me up at night is making sure that my systems remain operational because I can spend a lot of time a lot of money ensuring that my tech is secure, ensuring that my tech remains operational making a strong enough case to say, everything that I buy, I wanna buy multiples of that and set them up with proper redundancy, proper failover, have a proper disaster recovery planning place where if this fails, it just cuts over to this without any outages. But you can never be 100% certain because there's always gonna be some little thing niggling behind the scenes that could cause havoc. How did this impact you? How did this CrowdStrike outage impact you in the place that you work, was it? Nothing. I mean, were you, were you using one of the other endpoint protection solutions? Were you using CrowdStrike and this thing impacted you a lot? Has this been resolved? Is it still problematic? Are you thinking about ditching CrowdStrike? Let me know down below in the comments. Hey, remember to do the subscription thing as well. I've got a whole bunch of tech training courses as well that you can also go and check out. Watch those down below. All the best to all our tech heroes out there and we'll see you next time.